I had to close my old gym, a previous gym, but I have a new business opportunity with a friend. We want a partner. Would you be the person to talk to to ensure our partnership is partnership is all set up properly from a legal perspective? Maybe we should start, Matt, with like, do you need a partner? Should you partner with your friend and just mm-hmm. kind of roll from there? <laughs> the answer is know, no, no and no. You okay. Give, <laughs> you give me the business advice on whether or not I should partner with my best friend. I'm going to say no. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, listen, it's going to be dicey. And, and, and probably like the, 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 the comment that makes me shake in my boots is when I hear this, right? Like I, I, I'm talking to you and you say, oh yeah, I'm going to start a business with my friend. And I say, great, here's all of the things that you need. And you say back to me, oh, but, but he's my best friend. Like, we're not going to have that problem. And I'm just like, oh, oh, oh yeah, right. Good luck. Because <laughs> yes, you are. As soon as money starts coming into the business, you're going to have this problem. Um, and so- scary. The not funny part is you're going to lose your friendship too. Oh, well, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I know you and I have both had this phone call, Coop. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this has gone downhill. How, like, how do I get this person out of my business now? Right. And um, you and I, I, I know you and I both had that phone call. Yeah. And it's not a fun phone call to have. Go ahead. Well, what, what causes that, Matt? So like, you know, it, it is really common when you're entering mm-hmm. a new business for the first time to want a partner. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, you know, for me, it was a security blanket, plain and simple. They had 16 grand, but I probably could have got that somewhere else. It was mm-hmm. more the feeling of security that like, I'm not bearing all this risk by myself. They and share then, the load of the work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I can see the appeal, but like what, what takes people from there to oh, now our friendship is ruined. We're suing each other. You know, like what's the problem? Money. <laughs> that's, that's the root of all evil, right? Uh, so, you know, and the, the phone calls that I, I usually get under this circumstance is some iteration of, I entered my, I, I started a gym with my best friend and we split everything 50-50 um, he is supposed to do X, Y, and Z, but he doesn't do it anymore. And I have to do everything. And I'm tired of sharing my 50% profits with him, or I'm tired of paying him our guarantee of, of our guarantee draw of 2000 a month. Um, nine times out of 10, that's the issue is it's money. I'm tired of doing all of the work, um, and, and having to pay, my partner or partners, you know, it can go. Uh, so anyway, so do you want to enter a partnership with your best friend? Sure. Um, but we need to take steps in order to secure the relationship so that when, not if, when there's a problem, we have an unbiased neutral document uh, that is going to designate what has to happen. And that for the all intents and purposes is called an operating agreement. Um, so think of an operating agreement like a prenuptial agreement. Do you guys, this is a silly question. Do you guys have prenuptial agreements in Canada? Yeah, but we don't need them because everybody's just so passive aggressive that <laughs> they just like <laughs> cohabit a house forever instead of, yeah. So, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yes, we do. No, okay. So you, if you're getting married, getting married is basically like walking into a partnership with your best friend, right? it's supposed to be anyway. Uh, but we all know nine out of 10 marriages are going to end uh, just like probably something like eight or nine out of 10 um, partnerships end. So you think of the operating agreement as sort of this prenuptial to the business. Um, so you get together with your best friend, you guys decide to start a gym, it's all good and wonderful. And you get the gym going, um, you're going to need to file like an LLC or a corporation, um, file any fictitious name, set up the business bank account. You know, we can walk you through all of these steps, but none of that is actually going to come in and protect anybody when there's a problem. So the big step when we form a partnership is the operating agreement. Uh, This is the governing document uh, to the LLC. 
If it's a corporation that you decide, because we've had a conversation and decide that a corporation is better than a limited liability company, then you'll have bylaws. Um, but otherwise, majority of the time, it's an LLC. Uh, so we have an operating agreement. Uh, so, you know, what, what does this do? Well, it's gonna, you're, you're gonna be able to designate you know, who's getting paid what and how often are people getting paid and how much money are they gonna get paid? And, and I always strongly suggest we do uh, what's called a, a letter of resolution or an addendum to the operating agreement that then also designates sort of what are the measurables that have to be done by me or by you each day, each week, each month that more or less justifies the amount of money that I'm going to then we've already agreed that we're taking from the LLC. So, you know, you and I come together, Coop, and we agree that um, you're the back end, I'm the front end. And I'm supposed to uh, coach 20 classes a week um, to justify my profit distribution on a monthly basis of, of $2,000. Okay. But the gym starts doing really well. And I go, I'm just going to go sit on the beach. I don't want to coach my classes anymore. I just want to make money. Coop, you know, you can, you know how to coach. Go ahead. Um, and so now, now we get to the point where uh, you need to kick me out. So because you've done this properly ahead of time and we have exit clauses within the operating agreement and we have measurables that we each have to meet in order to justify the amount of money we're being paid by the LLC, now you have an exit clause coop by which you can kick me out. Um, and so... Yes, uh, I guess to answer your question, you need to come to somebody like us so that we can put this together properly and know that you really need to spend the time, effort, and money to put this together properly because there are gonna be problems. Um, and, and we need a document that basically says how we solve these problems. And also, I think you avoid a lot of problems just by writing that document. Like, mm -hmm. here's the responsibility, here's how much each of people are paid. Like in some of the cases that I've heard recently, it's uh, my partner's just been taking money out of my account. Here's one. This happened in Canada, believe it or not. These two partners could not resolve uh, their buyout agreement. And so one guy filled a bottle full of gasoline, put a rag in it, lit the rag on fire and threw it through no. the front of the gym. Yeah, this literally just You're happened serious? two weeks ago. Yeah. Like partnership agreements are valuable, right? So... Like that really happened. Okay. So Russell's That's got a question. Amazing. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, it's, it's a passion project. Right? What do you... Yeah. 